Welcome to the Nighttime Show. I'm here with head writer Matt Walker. I'll on the guest announcer, Logan Gunselman. Our guest today, Henry Zabrowski, who's on Crashing on HBO. Your pretty face is going to hell on Adult Swim and also that movie, Wolf of Wall Street. And now introducing your, your host slash Walmart's manager of the month. 13 months running. <laughs> it's Stephen Kramer Glick. Hey! hey! You did it. It's the You're like the opposite of Mike Black. Yes. Uh, normally we have Mike Black, who's our announcer usually, uh, who literally almost has a coronary every time he does it. <laughs> so I thought you would be the perfect opposition to that. It's uh, it's very yeah. nice. Thank you, Logan, for being here. Oh, thank you. Logan, if, we all a, our guests and, if we took all our announcers and put yeah. them like Russian dolls, Logan would be on the inside, and then probably Mike Glazer, and then... yeah. Then Rob, Robbie, then Robbie, and, and then, then Mike, Black. Mike Black. I don't know. Yeah, there's a lot of... And I like the slow roll in. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm a yeller. Because we have metal playing behind us. From our house. Knot. We have a house band called Iron Knot who does our live show, and so we uh, we, we feature their music always on the, uh, Fantastic on the show. And Logan is going to be on the live show, uh, oh, yeah. which uh, is... Uh, I, I believe uh, was uh, April April twenty second. Yeah, not is sure the, this one's yeah, gonna air. Yeah, but April twenty second yeah. is uh, you know Logan was on there. So if you go to YouTube and you look up uh, the April twenty second nighttime show, we'll have clips and funny things and all I'll sorts bring of the same energy. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about ah! staying consistent. Yeah. yeah, yeah, keep it, keep it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> just like that. Um, Henry, w- oh, very excited to have you. I'm stuttering over myself. I'm so excited, Henry. Is that a finger cut? Uh, I cut off the top of my thumb, the top eighth what? of my thumb, chopping mm-hmm. garlic. I was screaming about my manager at my girlfriend, which is very sad because mm-hmm. she's Wait, a hostage you were screaming to me. At my your life. girlfriend, I, about my, I was like talking about show business, like, yelling about it. Right, distracted. Cut the top, top eighth inch of my thumb off. Holy shit! Literally Are you just serious? Cut it off. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I fucked it up. This is like a month, and now this is a month into it. What were you it. making? I was chopping garlic. I was going to make a. Honestly, it was going to be lovely. I had a mixture, <laughs> a, a saute mixture of squash mm-hmm. and different greens <laughs> that I would put over a, with a miso kind of marinade mm-hmm. in there that I was Vaguely working on Asian. as well. Vaguely Asian, yeah. Because yeah. I can't go full Asian because no. of the, I don't it have would be any Asian fo, blood. Fo, fo, huh? Right there. Wow. Actually, it's pronounced fo, 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 fo. Right there. <laughs> Which is also the sound I make when I am stuck inside of a toilet. <laughs> leave the lid up. That's a good bit. <laughs> I, um, oh God. Did they reattach the top of your thumb or is it gone now? Left it Jesus. in the garlic. I was, was bleeding it delicious? So prof- it was just, I was bleeding so profusely. And it was just like, my girlfriend, Natalie Jean, is a stunt woman. She's a bunch of shit. She's very, but she's like on the ball. She was just like, wrap it up. Let's go. Look for the thumb. Can't find it because it was shuffled within the garlic cloves. <laughs> oh, did you, did you mince the tip of your thumb? I did something to it. I fucked it. <laughs> It is up. it sewn back on? No, they because I couldn't find it. Couldn't. Oh, so they just shit. cauterized it. Mm-hmm. So now it's just That's like this. Cool, though. It's kind of worst, worst pain. I'll never go. Terrible I'm pain, weak sure, yeah. in the first place. It's not like I think that there's grades of pain. I couldn't get a tattoo. Mm-hmm. I can't get anything. I so can't, you I just, lost a piece of your thumb is now gone forever. Yes. It's like a dent. It His will dream be a dent. of being a professional thumb wrestler, thumb wrestler is over. Okay, so it show me on your thumb. thumb. I know that we're on a podcast, but we're talking through the very top slither of nail. So that whole okay. mound of meat oh, at the yeah. top, Ooh. and then Gun. through the through the nail. Ooh, that's gotta oh hurt. And I just God. missed the nerve, which made it would have just made me drop. Yeah. Because what it comes down to it's again, I'm a comedian. I am not a uh, Navy SEAL. Yeah. Uh, I am not trained to withstand torture. Uh, I'm weak. I'll mm-hmm. say anything. You poke me in the belly button right. too hard. I'll tell you my fucking bank account. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. I tell you everything sure. you want to know. <laughs> but it's like, yeah. So it was bad. I was screaming and stuff, like very, oh. very like covered in covered in a cold sweat. Oh yeah. no! That happened. My dad cut off the tip of his finger in a garage door chain. Oh right uh, no! No, yeah. not good. Yeah, a lot of blood. Yeah, so now I'm like this. So now I have this little hat. I have a thumb hat I've been wearing because now it doesn't mm-hmm. get it can't get infected anymore. But the crust over it looks like what I imagine Abe Vigoda looked all <laughs> over his whole body towards the end. <laughs> right. Just in terms sure. of because when you're old, your skin just frays. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sitting on a seat too long. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm sure it's he like was a just, little beanie. Yeah, it's a little beanie. It's kind of yeah. cute, except for the fact it is gross. So I started wearing like a metallic <laughs> glove for a while to cover it, but then I looked even more like I'd becoming eccentric <laughs> since or moving to Los Angeles. Or a thimble. Have you thought yeah. about a thimble? Yeah. Maybe thumbs too thick. Ooh, that's kind of cool. You can get cool. a big thimble. 
Yeah. I don't th- can you? Like maybe there you big fingered women. Go to the factory like to that used to make the thimbles for Monopoly cuz now they go. need to make some more they need a thimble market. You could start that as a fashion trend to be like, it's look, make some big move. thimbles. Thimble. I'm sure the I'll Amish have a trend. That. Because again, the thick women from the Amish. I think thick women shoppings mm-hmm. are really good.com. Thick like you women get, shopping. And you get there and it's for about women I with feel big like hands. You could get that feet. at the dress barn. They would have thimbles for <laughs> big fingers. Yeah, because it's the dress barn is just sort of like are all the clothes for horses? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Again, that's a bit. It's one size fits all women and, and barn animals. Oh, kind of that's oh, nice though. Yeah. Wow. Oh my god. Join us together. So do you live in Los Angeles now or are you live in back east? Where I'm in uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here now. I'm back and forth a lot, but I'm yeah. pretty much here now. I'm getting used to it. Yeah? Yeah. When you go back to New York, do you have a place in New York or do you Yeah, yeah. I got our old apartment in New York He's there. By coastal. Oh yeah. Ooh, wow. <laughs> No Spreading joke. the brand. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all about being anywhere and everywhere. Like Pepsi did that smart move with Kendall Jenner. Brilliant yeah, I think, again, so bring smart. the protest movement to them, yeah. to soda. And again, I think brave move, smart move. Get the conversation going. Did That's you, what I'm doing. Did you see the post from uh, Martin Luther King's daughter? <laughs> no. uh, was she I, upset? Um, well. Why, though? A little. I mean, a little bit. But why was she uh, upset? She <laughs> it was just. I went down to Skid Row. I brought two pallets of Pepsi's and I handed them out after watching that commercial. And I was like, "Fix yourself. Give yourself a pick me up. Get yourself oh, a Pepsi." It's so good. She posted. This is no joke. Bernice King, Martin Luther King's daughter, wrote. Mm-hmm. If only Daddy would have known about the power of Pepsi. <laughs> <laughs> How fucking awesome is that? But he 186,000 uh, likes. But he was a Fanta uh, guy. Yeah, he yeah. was a Fanta guy. <laughs> you can't get in here. <laughs> he liked the Shasta uh, Cola. He was more of a Shasta. It's like a Fresca kind uh, of guy. Oh, shit. We're all going to yeah. hell. I feel um, like we're just in a brawl sitting. America's sitting in a coffin. Yeah. Just pulling the dirt in. <laughs> into the coffin like around us. And yep. It's kind of fun. It's kind yeah, of nice yeah, to be you. The absolutely. release of It's the End Times. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, you really can. Uh, speaking of End Times, uh, I came to know you from through this show, uh, Your Pretty Face is Going to Hell. Yes, now, sir. I, uh, I, 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 you know, I love Adult Swim. I, uh, Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job. Brought me and an old roommate that we hated each other. Me and this guy, well, this guy Doug. Yeah. It was Doug Beatty. And yep. he, we fuck it. We still to this day, we do not like each other. All right. We're not friends. But once a week, we would sit together uh, and we would watch that show. And it was the only mm-hmm. way that we would get along. It's like yeah, any it was, family and TV time, I feel yeah, like. You yeah. Are brought together. I mean, but this guy moment. really yeah. didn't like it. You know me. my I favorite went, Doug Beatty story. Yeah, please. Yeah. Well, it's when you went to go see him do improv. I went to go see him do improv at UCB without him knowing. I went to surprise him. <laughs> oh. And guess what he was doing on stage? What? A sketch about me. Wow. Isn't <laughs> yeah. that fun? What yeah. do you think about Were you? Were you painted in a flattering light? Uh, <laughs> no. No, I was not. It was all about how I leave <laughs> my clothes. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Hey, everybody. All right. It's your food. I listen to you to grow okay, up and have sex. So so what were his criticisms? Yep. Of you in this sketch, because uh, well, he had like a big fat friend, and he was like, <laughs> okay. he was like, he was like, hey man, you can't leave your clothes all over the floor. Also, why do you use bad language all the time? It's not cool. Okay. You know, <laughs> yo, it's not cool to use bad language, man. And that's what he was saying. And then wow. the guy, the no, he wasn't getting any laughs. It was just very uncomfortable. Yes. And I was sitting in the audience going. Oh my God, that's literally me. Like he's. I think he nailed you pretty good there. That's pretty accurate. Pretty much. I leave my clothes. Leave my clothes everywhere, and I use a lot of bad language because it makes you sad. Though it comes down to, at least you think that the rage that you'd inspire would make a good sketch. Sure, Mm -hmm. I'm like at least make it fucking hilarious. Come at me, and then it'll be like that is me, and then it could change your life. Yeah. By seeing I'm fine reflected. to be inspired that way. So, anyways, uh, got into Adult Swim, K, and then of course, uh, uh, your pretty face comes on the TV one night. Oh yeah, and I'm like, what the fuck? This is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. It's, I, I've it's said a this great before. Show. Thank you. I've said this before, but if I saw somebody else doing this show, if I saw another man play Gary, I would find him and kill him and take his place. Like, yeah. I, there's no other. I was just like, I can't believe that it worked out that way. But again, we unite people all over the place. Yeah. Um, single people living in their basement. Guys on death row mm-hmm. um men trapped in a dunkin donuts because they lost their family in a flood <laughs> <laughs> all that whole those that demographic is what we're looking for it's like yeah. three quarters of america yeah. at this point people yeah besieged by if you've had a traumatic experience you're gonna love this show oh. if you haven't had a traumatic experience go get one yeah <laughs> come back to the show <laughs> then then watch it um yeah. for those of the audience who don't know what the show's about it is basically kind of like 
the office type an office type show. The first that season, takes place yeah, was definitely office humor in hell. It was yeah. definitely an office set in hell, and it was like that. But now it's definitely become like Laverne and Shirley set in hell. It's like yeah. the sitcommy like version of it is just really taken over and it's getting it's like degrading but i think as it degrades it gets better oh yeah i love it and uh, especially that you have guys like eddie pepitone on there love him being tortured to death you know being tortured merciful you know he is a perfect comedic entity (laughs) yeah i asked him we literally were at dinner for the premiere season 3.5 what is the what the how they labeled it and i went to eddie i was like how do you get to be like, I was like, I want to be where you are, where you are. Like, how do I get to be as funny as you? And he's like, a lifetime of pain. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, very good. Uh, 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 oh, good yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. So how did that come about for you? How did that show come about? Like, how did you end up getting I cast on I just that? got that audition. Yeah? Uh, well, the way it worked was actually really great, is that apparently what well, Dave told me, the story is, is that they, in a list of auditions, they picked out my name because Henry Zabrowski sounds like a Mad Magazine name, and they did it as, like, a laugh. And I had, like, a good audition, and then they were like, oh, if they're all like this, this is going to be great. And then I guess everything else was kind of like, I just, everyone also had a bad day mm-hmm. in those rooms. Yeah. So I ended up being the top of that heap. And then we just kind of all got along. It was one of those weird things. When I met Dave and Casper, it was like if we had done comedy together in college, like if we had known each other, we would have been doing sketch together probably. Yeah. That, I love those guys. They became like immediate kind of mentors. And yeah, it just worked out. I don't know. How have I ever booked any, anything? It's all a fucking random crapshoot. <laughs> I, I don't sit and pick out scripts. Well, that's the thing is, Henry's. I really thought that you created that show. That's mm-hmm. like from watching how you are on that show, it felt like it was written for you. They so. gave me a lot of creative license. They yeah. allowed me to, to improv a great deal. And now you find out that this is what they really like. So now it's like the show is very communal now, which is cool as shit. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's but so I still, cool. I'm not allowed to touch the scripts. Dave and, and Casper have a fucking steel grip really on their scripts yeah are they are they the guys who write everything for yes. the show yeah. yeah and then we have some writers that are coming in now because i think they're getting lazy really <laughs> they're not working hard oh, God, these guys are these so fucking lazy. People they show so up just collecting checks do you do the show do you shoot the show in atlanta or you shoot yeah. It? yeah oh yeah ATL. that's everything is out there, love right? it love uh, isn't it all most of adult swim stuff shot out there not not everything but the good stuff is shot in la and new york all the stuff that they pay attention to is shot in la and new york <laughs> so we're the like good stuff's in la and new york but our show's in atlanta <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> they keep anything that's celebrity base is normally shot in la and then right. we're viewed they always have like one atlanta show and so we're the ones where we get to like do and like but we're like the naughtiest show and that whole crew is like it's hard to it's just fucking punk rock but a television show. Like, we work out, like, it's almost irresponsible. It's actually technically bad. Like, we're, yeah. like, getting washed in a parking lot. It's, like, everybody's into it. It's, like, witches and punks. And it's, like, everybody, like, I, I, I don't know how to put it. It's got black magic all through it. Shane Morton's a registered Satanist. Got me into the Satanism movement. I didn't know <laughs> Satanists had to, that seems so anti-Satanist registry? to have to register. Yeah. You could get a card, but it's just a bilking thing. It's essentially just a scam. <laughs> But right. they know like a pyramid it. Pyramid scheme. Yeah, you pay money and you get a, just a little business card that says "I'm a Satan." That says, I'm "Yeah, a it's just Church of Satan." Wow, which is hilarious. Member of a, of the Church of Satan. Yeah, but you do it to get the card. You do it for the card. Yeah, it's fine. I understand. You that. could set up your own website that like knocks them off and just sell your own Church yep. of Satan cards, and who's gonna know? You'll get some. But at the same time, they'll they probably they, let you in. Yeah, with a discount for Satan doing something like pretty that. much. They'll like I mean, gore. Satan's on his show. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. like you should get a discount. Yeah, they're like great. You're an entrepreneur. Yeah, that's great. You're spreading the message. Yeah, you guys yeah. should go in costume. Have you ever been to the Coke factory, the Coke museum oh, in Atlanta? No, I still haven't gone. I I did a cross-country road trip with my family, and we went to the Coke museum, and I really think that you guys in full costume from that show, like, I don't, they're not going to turn away a paying customer. It's Coca-Cola. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. You know what I mean? It's like in Atlanta, I said, now they're used to it because there's so many horror shows now shooting in Atlanta between mm-hmm. The Walking Dead and like now Dana Gould's new show, Satan, uh, Stan vs. Evil is there. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. And so, they're so they're, they don't even care because we used to do as a joke thing. There's like a Dunkin' Donuts down the street from our studios. Yeah. And so I used to drive over and be like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, try to do something. <laughs> and they just stare at you. Like, <laughs> It's already violent enough like, here. Another that one. Yeah. 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 What show are you doing? <laughs> Which it's one like are Vancouver. you? Vancouver. You ever been to Vancouver to shoot something? No, but it's like that. We're yeah, just fucking like, Vancouver. It's like all filming. Yeah, now. we were shooting uh, the Big Time Rush movie in Vancouver, and and we we're in our car, and we we're driving by a river, and I go, I go, wow, look at that, look at that river, and our driver goes, uh, oh yeah, Kristen Stewart, when they were doing Twilight a couple months ago, made me drive down there and 
so she could go stand by the water. What a fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. But it was pretty, yeah. I mean, they, they just have everything films there. Yeah. So that no one's phased by anything. No. There was a girl that I dated in Vancouver who thought that I was a, a, the, uh, the stand-in for, I remember. A, for a character on the show. And That's I was like, great. and so she thought I was she a looked at you. She was like, he can't possibly be on the show. No, yeah. Look she at liked you for you. She wasn't yeah. trying to get into the Hollywood machine. Not at all. The Vancouver, Not at all. That Vancouver machine. That's oh, big. Yeah. She, uh, she was the she aerialist, on, right? Yep. And she worked, yeah, she was an aerialist and a Cirque du Soleil performer. And stuff. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, it was no joke. It was no joke. Wow. But uh, Mohawk, the whole bit. It was, awesome. it was pretty great. But then she, uh, same same weird situation. She was wor- she uh, she was working on, on Noah that that movie, that movie, that big movie. Oh, that. And Russell Crowe yeah. was on the set, and she was like, um, "Cool, who are you visiting today? Did you do you know anybody that's in the in the movie?" And he was like, "I'm, I'm Russell, Russell Crowe." Crow. I think and she's just got that face blindness that Brad Pitt says he has. Yeah, she just doesn't know. She doesn't know anything about the bit. Like aside from the work that she does in the business, she doesn't know yeah. any movies and TV that's stuff. That's so freeing. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so much more fun. That's so nice. L.A. must be so, so much easy. nicer. When you could just be, you know, like you just don't know that you just farted oh, yeah. on like, <laughs> God knows, the Anthony Quinn. I don't know why yeah. I chose him. When my mm-hmm. mom, my mom was with me when we met the president of Nickelodeon and the president of Nickelodeon's name is Seema. And my mom <laughs> goes, oh, nice to meet you. What's your name? And she goes, Seema. And my mom goes, Seaman? <laughs> he goes, no, it's Seema. And my mom goes, Seaman. <laughs> mom, hearing... you are not <laughs> helping me. Yeah, this is not good, mom. Yeah, she, she, she was like, you can change your name, and, you know, people change their name well, all the time. Well, you know, yeah, that is just difficult. Yeah. Being like, she's a mom. Yeah, just, just leave her be. Let her out. Hey, so, uh, you know, I, I, uh, as always, you know, we always have Fireball Whiskey with us whenever we tape an mm-hmm. episode of our show. You know, we, we had the Kaplan twins on. We yeah. gave them a bottle. We give bottles away a lot to people. You know, sometimes. It's good I'm stuff. Like, people yeah, like it. It's, people yeah. love that stuff. Uh, I actually have a bottle with me right here, and uh, I'm, I'm going to drink some of it. Uh, but if you listen, when I open the top of this bottle, you can hear in the bottle, you can hear the fireball whiskey talking and it's a uh, it's on here fireball yes. oh, talking oh you totally can hang on All let right. me take the lid off ready hey Olga, the man <laughs> i could be the man there he I'm is i'm gonna be the man today that's the We're sound that Fun. That's fireball. the sound of the fireball yeah. whiskey inside it's the like, bottle it's like it's like encouraging you it's it does hey there fireball whiskey hi man I'm so excited. I can't wait to drink you. Man, stick, stick it. Get rid of all this small talk. Just drink me already so I can have some fun in your all tummy, right. bro. Get, get in my tummy. Get Woo! in my tummy. Well, make it happen. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. How how is it down there? Oh my goodness, dude! It's so it's so cold down here. But like, dude, what the hell did you eat for lunch? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh um, my god! I it mean, smells like dog shit down here, bro. <laughs> oh my! Oh well, hopefully that fireball whiskey will make things smell just oh a little bit god. better in there. I can't. You know, I'm gonna have to hang out in your stomach for a while, and make it smell good. So uh, yeah, yeah, keep, try. Keep drinking that shit, bro. Yeah, I will. I'm gonna drink a little bit more. Here we go. Here we a little go. More. more for friends. Yeah, we're having a party in Steven's drown stomach. Drown out, drown out these it's horrible awesome. choices I've made. Woo! Oh, fireball whiskey. You know, fireball. It makes you feel good and it makes your stomach smell better. <laughs> All right, back to the show. Um, where did you get started? Where did you grow up? Where did you grow? First of all, where did you grow up? I grew up in Quinns, New York Quince. City. In the Quinns. Quinns. I'm walking here. <laughs> I am walking here. You see, can you hear my accent? That's a really good New Forget York accent. Forget about it. <laughs> Forget about it, my friend. <laughs> I went. I grew up in Queens. Uh, my dad was a cop. They didn't really give a shit. We were, couldn't have been farther from uh, entertainment world, even though we lived in New York. I didn't get into theater until I got to Florida. I went to Florida for high school and college, and then. I've just been doing this. I just moved back to New York after college, and my sketch group Murder Fist, we all moved together, and then we did that for 15 years. Wow. Um, And then we started doing everything. My podcast network, Cave Comedy Radio, all started out in New York, like last podcast, all that kind of happened. We just sat and did work, and now I'm last podcast on the left. Yeah. uh, Mm -hmm. Big, uh, big, big, big show. Starting to be. Getting up there. Nominated for a... 
a, we- web- a webish. A webish. A yeah. webby, webish. Big shoe. Really big shoe. Really big shoe. Big shoe. <laughs> but yeah, Nobody yeah. listens and gets that reference at all, I would imagine. We, Why not? The, I don't think any, we don't get the Ed Sullivan audience listening people, to this podcast. I, I don't know. We may have okay. a... F- probably not. They got to know Ed Sullivan. I, 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 I laughed because you all did it. Yeah. So I was <laughs> just true. like, well, they all know it. They so like probably... <laughs> yeah. Did you, uh, did you do... Um, uh, mo- it's mostly sketch. Mostly sketch work? All or, sketch. Uh, yeah. I did sketch before you had to go to school to do sketch like you have to do now. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow, yeah. really? I, back when he just used to be friends could just do sketch and you'd get up and do weird indie shows and it wasn't indie. It was just shows. They were just shows. And now I don't, which is very strange where it was yeah. like, a th- I remember as that was happening, I was like, why are you paying five hundred dollars to do sketch? I do it for free, and still no one cares. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you can do the same thing for free. Were there um, other people in your group that were uh, that that have gone on to do stuff, or or did they all kind of kind of go off in their own way? A couple people start doing their own shit. It's like we're still doing stuff together. I mean, like Murderfist is not broken up. We're just still doing it. It's just, we'll never say broken up. But my two guys, Eddie Larson, is writes for Jeff Ross, and now he's out here, and we're working on shit together. And Holden McNeely and Eddie and I. I all wrote my character special for Netflix together. That oh, it was wow. essentially like putting Mur- Murder Fist on Netflix. Yeah. They're like your, uh, they're characters? like One Direction. They're not broken up, and they're all very handsome. We're all oh, very yeah, handsome. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, What's, nothing. Wait, changed. what was the special on Netflix? Uh, yeah, from the there was a show called The Characters. It got a lot of traction. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I yeah. know this show. I had one of those. Yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, so I did one where I it was just basically we just put essentially. 15 years of Murder Fist into half an hour on Netflix. Mm-hmm. How fucking cool is that? Yeah, it was cool as shit. It was so cool, we ended that series for anybody else to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was yeah. like, we can't improve on this, so we're just going to have to stop it. I like that perspective. Yeah. 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 But it was, Absolutely. yeah, it was cool as fuck. Yeah. We that's got a- to do whatever we want. We had total control. They gave us like a half an hour of Netflix's time. Oh my God. That's so fucking cool. What kind cool of budget as- did you have on something like that? Honestly, it was pretty big. Like everything we asked for, we got pretty much. Wow. And we didn't ask for very much because we also didn't realize how much you could ask for until I saw yeah. Paul Downs and they rented out a fucking uh, a monster truck rally. Oh, wow. And what? I was like, oh, we could have done that. Yeah. Oh like God! I never thought of that. Yeah. yeah, we just I rented puppets from my creative team in Atlanta for Pretty Face. I just rented puppets from them, which was fucking cheap yeah. as balls. So it's like we came in under budget for them. Yeah, John Early. Oh. Lots yeah, John of, uh, Early, Kate Berlant, Lauren Lapkus, uh, these are all uh, very, Tim very Robinson. Uh, it was great, dude. It was a really good opportunity. Uh, but it was just so different that I don't think the audience understood what was happening. Because it really just, if you just put it, they put it as a series. But essentially it was, was it eight different specials? Okay. Yeah. Like Lauren Lapkus is so fucking hilarious. Yeah, she's the best. Yeah, she's amazing. Yeah. Did you know, um, uh, I, I, uh, there's there's a few shows on TV that I watch. Uh, do you have, what's what do you watch right now? Like, what's what I are watch your a, shows? I watch a lot of movies. I watch a lot of docs and movies. Or re- like we we're big into horror, of course, because it's my whole life. Um, recently, we wa- try to watch Rome, which we go back. We watch new shit. I'm watching. I'm kind of watching Fargo, but mostly we're we watching Twin Peaks because of the uh, the, of the, new, the new episodes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I just. Uh, I've been watching uh, the Crashing, this HBO show that you're on. Mm-hmm. It's it, Holy she's great. Shit, it's I mean, such Pete a good Holmes. Show. I almost feel like now they'll rev up for the second season. Now that it got picked up, and Pete Holmes can be even more of himself. Like once he bo- opens up, yeah. he's a joke machine <laughs> to yeah. the point where you wonder what's like wrong. What happened to him? Yeah, that he's so he's such a good joke machine that he just can just like run bits like yeah. crazy. He's yeah. very so good. He would sit around with, uh, I guess, uh, him and Sarah Silverman became friends because he would sit around in her house and she would talk about, oh, I'm doing this bit, and he would go, ah, here's a funny idea. Tags. Here's a tag, and just tag the shit out of it. And he said it really ingratiated him into that comedy, into the comedy world because it was, you know, being able to do stuff like that. And I'm, I love that his. Uh, uh, that the show is doing well for him because it's I when he had the talk show and the talk show ended I uh, was like ah, that was like a bitch. blow for like our generation I was like ah fuck that was like a part of like we were supposed to get up over on that but yeah. then he's it's good yeah crashing is great and then also like we're shooting on 35 millimeter film oh my like God. that's the other thing really thousands yeah. of dollars being thrown in a bucket us improvising no scripted dialogue essentially mm-hmm. by the end everybody's just improvising 
And so I was just being like, you're just really, like, Judd Apatow's got a lot of fucking pull. Yeah. Oh, my God. And you're playing uh, uh, you're playing a stand-up comedian yes. on, on the show. And, like, an open, kind of like an open mic. Yeah, an open comedian. micer, like, essentially <laughs> it's based so off funny. of. It's funny. I took two guys and I put them together. It was like, because they wanted a, they was like, we want the guy who wears all black ranting comedian. And I was like, I know two of those guys and me. Because I'm sure. one, and so a part of it was the most uh, intimidating thing in the world, which is being like, "Hey, Henry, could you put together eight minutes to stand up uh, for Judd? Like, literally, just put together eight minutes. Like, they're <laughs> like, blink, 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 because I was with Jermaine and Aparna, and they have eight minutes to burn. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, I so yeah. I had to write a set and then do it cold. And then I did it cold, and then I met. Well, I met with Beth Stelling, and so we sat and we worked it a little bit. But it was like, I know cadence, so I just did like stand up cadence and then also the like, idea of free flowing. I just need to write three sentences of paragraph with a punchline into and, and, and fold jokes into it. And it was pretty fucking cool. I got like a weird little crash course. Oh my but I feel, God. I did like fine. You did great. Like your character is so fucking. T- it's like the most typical like you see it all yes. the time full like, of rage a, thinks he's Doug Stanhope oh, yeah. like god because that's the idea there's a moment there's a moment Matt that you, if, if you haven't seen this it's so fucking hilarious there's a moment where uh, Henry's on stage in an empty comedy club the only other people in the room are two other comics yeah and they're just sitting there watching him and he's doing stand up and Pete walks in and goes What's going on here? And he goes, I worked all damn day handing out flyers for this. Can I have this, please? Can I have this moment? And he goes, yeah. all right. And then he just goes, so uh, anyways. Uh, yes, he just like <laughs> blows right past him. <laughs> working out his material on a microphone in front of two guys. And you know. Been like, there, done that. Yeah, we've been doing, yeah. we've been both, we've both been doing stand-up for about 14 years. Yeah. And you know, you we've done shows, you know, in like, you know, shithole fucking bars. Constantly. Matt once did a show on a fucking. Uh, just the eighth anniversary of the time I did stand up on a bus. <laughs> <laughs> for uh, it was a, uh, you know they have those uh, they have buses to take people to casinos, right? Yeah. So they're like, oh, we're gonna have entertainment on this bus to take people to this casino. They'll entertain what about them on the comedy? trip out there. So it's like, okay, fine. I take the gig. They're gonna pay me a hundred bucks. Fine, I'm happy. Get there to go on the bus. Uh, two people showed up to take the bus with stand up comedians, and I was like, <laughs> I stole my hundred bucks, so I'm gonna do stand up for two people on a bus. It was a 65 year old Jewish woman. And her mother. Excellent. Oh. Just that's, my crowd. So that's her body. Yeah. Yeah. Her so body. I she go, and like uh, the first comic <laughs> goes up, and the second comic goes up. They do, we had to do 20 minutes each, and then it was my turn to go up, and I go up. And at this point, the older of the two women was like getting a little tired. So halfway <laughs> through my set, she rolled over to go to sleep. So I basically <laughs> walked half the audience. From One the just bus. died. She might One have died. died. She might have died. And it's then. Possible. We had to wait at the casino because we're in the middle of the desert at Casino Morongo by Palm Springs. So you just have to wait around for eight hours so they those same two people can get back on the bus at the end of the day and come back. So yeah. it's, it, it was uh, both ways. Like uh, the, We didn't have to perform on ways. the way back. We yeah, were then you could just sit and drink just, out of a kettle on the way out. And then we just sat around. It was like, uh, what a terrible decision we all made. And then it was our friend who started this company to like entertain people on his bus. And it was a one and done deal. Like uh. He wrapped the bus. He got a bus oh, and he paid Jesus. to have it wrapped with like his logo. Was, we like, did a show. To, spent five grand on this thing. It's crazy. Him and I did a show together at USC, and mm-hmm. uh, and it was it, it was like one of these gigs that's just the sweetest fucking gig. Like they oh. they take such good care of you. They oh yeah, feed you, and then it's it's nearby us, right? And it, we're in this theater. It's like, this is the dream. They gave oh, us like a grab God. bag with like uh, terry cloth robes and like these plush bath towels yeah. and like and they all paid kinds of stuff. really really well yeah. and we were like this is fucking awesome and it was just so what's and gonna happen yeah so they go we want you guys to book a show here every month can you book a show here every month mm-hmm. we're like fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. we're yeah. so in Let's right this, yeah. so they were like here's they're like here's the budget it's like a couple grand they offered what? us to fucking book this show and we're like this is gonna be a fucking blast and we're like all right here's the headliner and we sent over we go this is who we booked and it was um, a comic. We don't have to say who it is, yeah. but it, we we booked very good a, comic. A comic who's been on Conan like fifteen fucking times. Yeah, like an established guy, an established, yeah. well known guy. You could see at the fucking comedy store tonight, like a great guy. And they go, little offensive. It's oh little no, offensive. it's Christian it's trap. Not our stuff. Can you have anybody else? Then you could. Say. And we're like, all right, fine, whatever. Here's someone else. We send over someone else. They go. It's just a little bit too racial for us. <sighs> a little. And we're like, what the fuck? 
I what w- do you want to do then? We sent, I think, four people, and the fourth person, they still, they were like, we don't know. And we, and I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm sorry, guys. No. I you should just that ta- bag that money. And it just done the whole hour yourself, just being yeah. like, so like, so how generous was Jesus Christ? And you're yeah. like, yeah, just put your hands together for so the, good. the fishes. So good. Oh, this guy. I'm just still Water stuck. Water into wine. I'm stuck on the fact you guys are getting robes in comedy. I'm not at robe level. <laughs> it's crazy. You got to get robes. It was a lot. It was robes. way too, it was a great deal. I still use the bag they gave me as one of my grocery bags. See, oh, I'm still paying. Yeah. Bags. <laughs> You're still that. getting paid. So I love it. <laughs> I might see my sketch group was 10 people deep when we arrived to New York. So once we started getting in the world of stand up, because it's like, stand, like we were the, the sketch group in the stand up world for a mm-hmm. long time. And the best way to get booked in a gig is the fact that we're ten people in an audience. As soon as we sh- that's how we started. Mm-hmm. Was like like you book Murder Fist, you got at least ten people there, and we also yeah. buy a bunch of drinks because yeah. we're alcoholics and we're big laughers. So it's like you like it was like a perfect little open mic night until everybody around us started leveling up, and then we got to level up. Now, when mm-hmm. you say you're an alcohol, when you say that you like to drink, uh, yeah. I, I happen to know that, which is why I brought you a bottle of Fireball whiskey. No, Fireball, oh, you're the best. Yeah, well, you know, we uh, we we like drinking that stuff. We drink it a lot. I'll man, take so it. It's for you. Thank it's you. Yours. Yeah, it's yours, pal. Yeah, this is for our my family. Yeah, you <laughs> I'll give it to my family. Home. Bring it to your fam and let them uh, let them make horrible choices with you. I <laughs> love the idea. If I ever have a son or a daughter or child, yeah. Just give them little nips. Little nips. I don't really understand that. It's because even as a baby, my mom openly confessed that I was such a bad traveler and I was such a bad little kid. I was like so uh, loud and very yeah. intense. Not bad, just like disruptive to life. Sure. I was just rough to be around and stuff. She used to just Benel drill me till I went to sleep all the time. What? Just do that. Well, you turned out great. Look at me. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. But You're it's like, fine. You could just put a kid on screensaver. Yeah, for a little bit, give him a mm-hmm. little bit of Benadryl. Go right well, didn't to sleep. some oh, flight attendant get in trouble for that a while ago? She like snuck a Tylenol PM into some <laughs> crying kids like snack or something. Oh, Boom! Shit. Put him right out. And something like that, which, I mean, oh, good I for would, her. I would do that. At too. least they gave Fuck snacks on that flight. Yeah, right? yeah. it's yeah. like it's you know like putting kids. your grandmother to sleep. Yeah, sure. That like that old scenario that I'm not permanently. Yeah, not putting them to sleep. Do you have kids? Do you you have kids? No, I don't. I don't think I'm fertile. Yeah. We did it. We I think weed made them big and slow. Yeah. Do you smoke a lot of weed? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God bless. It's cool. Yeah. I'm pretty cool for it. You're pretty cool. It makes me pretty cool. Yeah. Honestly, now it I'm back to the, the I'm coolest. back to the nighttime smoking. That's what I do. I can't do it outside because I get weird. Or if yeah? I have to speak to people, I get weird. Yeah, no, I get that. I yeah, get so that. I keep it for the nighttime. Yeah. The deep night times <laughs> when we're watching my alien docs or something. Mm-hmm. Or I'm doing research for the podcast. Oh, that's good. Do yeah, you do? Uh, do you do a lot of research for your show? Hours of research. Yeah, really. We take a lot. Our 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 show is pretty detailed. Tell us about your show. Well, it's good. Last podcast on the left, we do so every week. We do a different topic, either about serial killers, paranormal, the occult, and uh, our goal is to be the most evil slash well researched show. So you have to stand us to get what is probably the best accumulated knowledge about serial killers or various issues about the the alien aliens and the paranormal like I'm the alien guy so I put together all the alien stuff mostly but it's like we just did Chris Benoit today mm-hmm. so it's like us do we just oh, went through yeah. a whole thing and I had to learn about wrestling which I've never learned before and LA's got a bunch of wrestling podcasts so yeah. I listened to it it's just them being like this huge man is better than this other huge man and I'm yeah, just like basically. I don't know. but are they this thing that's predetermined head? who's gonna win yeah. yes but they have to earn it, kind of. Chris Benoit was talking about how you have to earn it. You know he I mean? was Ooh, exceptional. That when that all went down was the an era when I was actually still watching wrestling. Yeah. Like I gave it up on like ten years ago. But. Without ruining your other podcast, I don't know who that is or what happened. Oh, it's not. All. It's not. It is well known well, knowledge. Then. He killed his wife and his son, and then he killed himself on his weight machine. Yeah. And they say that it had something to do with. There's steroids. many theories, but it's got either steroids or it's got to do with the fact that essentially, like after years of concussions, your brain can calcify yeah. like it has Alzheimer's, yeah. and so there's a part of like he just kind of left his body, and uh, and he just freaked out. But he was just about to go win the heavyweight championship. The championship. Yeah, he knew he was going and then to. That day, they find his body, and then people didn't know the full story yet. And they did a whole tribute to Chris Benoit that night because it was a Vince McMahon. Oh, they found out he yeah. was the murderer. And then the next day, they find out 
he did all it. that had happened, and then they've never mentioned his name anywhere in, re- in relation to WWE ever again. Yeah, they wiped him clean. It's they like he never existed. He's like a Voldemort. He must because not be there's used. like there's like famous matches of his where like he's like one of the all time technical wrestling greats. Like he's this guy from Canada who was like just great at the actual physicality of yeah. it. Yeah, and they sort of like have wiped him out of their database. Like because they have like a a WWE channel and stuff, and I don't think they ever show any Chris Benoit. I think he's banned from the channel. He's banned from the channel. Yeah. He was a great wrestler, terrible husband and father. Yeah. Because he, that's what happens when you end up murdering the well, whole family. And they all end up terrible. Saying, yeah. yeah, you bad reviews. You get a one star on Parent Yelp if you end the family. <laughs> and so it's pretty rough. Yeah, he did bad. Maybe she was really nagging him a lot. I th- honestly, what I do like is there's a whole story Jesus that he mad. was given the son HGH because uh, yeah. the son was born really small, mm-hmm. and so the idea is that maybe the son did, well, went like did something no, crazy. I'm the father, and then like yeah. he had to go and was kill the son. Son, Holy big shit. at the time because I no. remember back Very in small. the day it was a thing where we had a bunch of friends who were like not going into puberty yet. Like I remember there were a lot of, it was like around that age Mm. and there were a lot of little boys I knew who were getting shot up with, I don't Mm. know if it was HGH, but they were like, they were just going to doctors be like, they haven't started puberty yet. Let's yeah, get this gonna, going. Let the let the janitor play with his penis. Make him an adult before his <laughs> yes, time. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but they had to go in. Uh, well, my buddy Eddie, that he did, was doing steroids in high school football. They were doing. They were obsessed with it. But it's also just because he's just a lifetime of fighting. It's kind of the same thing on why a lot of football players end up doing horrible crimes because they're whole, and anybody in a, in a very aggressive sport because they're essentially you trained get hit in the head for a living. Yeah, you're just trained to beat yeah. the shit out of people. You're gonna, it's going to bleed into your life, which is horrible. Yeah. A lot of them don't do it, but a lot of them do because they just they lose the grip. All right, well, we got to <laughs> jump to a little thing that we like to call... You have to make some music. Can you make music noises? Can you <laughs> dun, 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 I was just going to go... Here, I'll, oh, wait. There you go. Okay, right, well, okay, hang on, we'll do it. Ready? This is a little thing we like to call the <laughs> credit dunk. Credit dog. Credit dog. Gonna ask you about your credit. I am the There we go. That's me sticking my butt in out of a Michael and Michael have issues is your first credit on IMDb. Yeah. Is that true? Is that your first TV credit? Well, I have one other that I don't like to talk about. It was right before that. Tell me about it! <laughs> I did one called Silent Library where I was the punishment. I was on Craigslist. I remember Silent Library. Yeah, it was fucking horrible. It oh, was the VH1 shit. show. I remember that. And so there was a Craigslist ad looking for men with hairy bodies to get on television. I was like, that's me. Because I've had back hair since I was How 11 years old. How did you not wind up on that show, Stephen? I didn't live. I didn't, he made the I, ad. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Logan. Come on. <laughs> fucking Logan. Um, but I sent a picture of my body here. Um, to them, and the guy said, "You're great." And then the idea was that in silent libraries, that everyone had it was a series of punishments, and the contestants had to remain completely silent. And if they lay lost, if they made any noise, they'd have to do a punishment. And I was one of the punishments where I had to come out, and I had sausages uh, made out of suspenders, suspender sausages, uh, on my pants, and they had to eat them off my body. Holy! Were they shit. cooked? I guess so. I don't give a shit. I hope they, whoever, they were the worst groups of fucks <laughs> on the face of the planet. It, did, it was some weird screamo bands that were like the contestants and they were terrible. Oh, but God. that was, and then right after that, I got Michael Michael of Issues. And that was because of, because of Kumail Nanjiani. He essentially got me booked on that job. Wow, really? Yeah, because we were friends coming up in, in uh, Sketch in uh, New York when he had just moved to New York. And then he booked that job and then he pulled my tape. He's like. He got wow. me my first foot in. I love that guy. He's super nice. He's he, a good dude. My first gig I ever had was uh, on a show called Carpoolers with TJ Miller. Oh, yeah. It was TJ's first job. TJ's also a good motherfucker who's remembered me. I did the character showcase in Montreal. Oh, wow. And he hosted it. And ever since then, he always helps me. He's, he's a good dude. I'm sorry. It's all right. <laughs> Fireball's oh, yeah. going down the wrong pipe. Yep, <laughs> Fireball <laughs> starting to rock and roll. That's what we need. Uh, let's drop. Boom. We're going to... Another show called Girls. You were on the show Girls. See. 
Holy fucking shit. Yeah, I didn't know. It was before it was supposed to be a thing. I had no clue what they, who these people were. It was before mm-hmm. the season came out. I hung out in like a triple banger with Adam Driver before he was anything. And he like, he just rolled over. He's like, you want to roll? You want to like rehearse a scene and shit? So it's like we hung out for like the afternoon. He was like a cool dude. And yeah. I just improved everything. And was your scene with him? Who was your scene with? It was me and Adam Driver. Wow. And then and uh, Lena was there too. Did you have any idea then that he'd become someday Darth Millennial? I knew he was hot. Yeah. yeah. He has a gut. He's got that natural V. Yeah. He's got that V shaped body and he's got like those nice tight abs and you know he's got a big penis and shit like that. He's got See a big face. See Hawkeye Logan? What's your opinion? Uh, Is that your type or are you more into the yeah. f- French Canadian mimes? What's French your Canadian <laughs> mimes? Marcel Marceau. That's yeah, what's your they have to pretend like they're trapped <laughs> before <laughs> I meet them. That's <laughs> he's available. <laughs> um, no, I, he's, as soon as people are too into someone, my uh, I get annoyed. I get it. Mm-hmm. So I I will agree that I do like his bod. His he's got he's got mean eyes to me. He is. I think he's got mean bones. Mean you know bones. I mean? Yeah. He's got mean genes. He he looks like he comes. It makes sense that he plays villainous characters. Like he he looks like regardless of that's who he is as a person. Yeah. But he just. Um, well, yeah, if you saw, I just saw that movie where he was in this, where he was a scientist and there was a kid with the eyes that are lights. You know, he was an alien yeah, kid or that something. That was good. Oh, wait. Another dimension. Give me shelter or something no, no, like no. that. No, no, Oh, I know what you're talking about. No, no, no. no. It's, uh, and Kirsten Dunst was in it. Kirsten Dunst was in I it I saw too. that too. What the fuck was that movie It was called? an alien movie that was like kind of cool, but then all of a sudden all, all the hell. aliens looked like they were angels. And I was like, this is Yeah, insane. they were all Did Kirsten Dunst play an alien? Because I've seen her in real life and she, she looks kind of... She like played she the one. mom of an alien, so oh. ooh. The, yeah, she's she either had sex genes. with an alien or yeah. is an alien. You I kind of like Melancholia. That was good, but she was sad. I sad. Yeah, but in Weird, that one, the, the name would <laughs> right. You think it'd be yeah. a rom com? Yeah, you think you'd laugh a lot. I was like, be sarcastic with me. <laughs> don't just bra- like just don't have me like a movie just called sadness. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to remember what yeah, it's called. Yeah, Melancholia was fucking depressing. I was sad. Yeah, but, but I, in Adam Driver in this movie, which I can't remember the name of, I feel like a real asshole because our whole show is all about talking about things like this. <laughs> you uh, up. But I saw the damn movie. Uh, I'm pulling it up right now. He, yeah, he's in this movie, and then he's got the Midnight Special. That yes, was awesome. it was good. Yeah. Was it also with um my boy? Um, uh, I love uh, Michael Shannon, man. Yeah, I love yeah Michael Shannon. Here's the thing, though, is there's no. It's weird because Adam is not scary in that movie no. or or mean. And he's supposed to just be like a nice, kind of cute a doctor. Yeah, you kind of look at his face and you're like, nah, dude, no, you're like, you're like the top, you're like the guy, the evil one. He yeah. has a like, like William Defoe, like he's like, like that. He's like our William Defoe. As he gets older and becomes less traditionally hot and more like crusted over, I think he will just play only villains. Once yeah, it's probably. over that, because like now he's got the body. Right. He's, he's got, got like good great, little nipples. Great, like he looks really good. But he's got he, nice look, nipples. If Willem Dafoe's got the same thing. Rock and body. Also great nips. <laughs> and he's got a hanger on him too. Because yeah. I saw some other movie where he was completely nude and he is smuggling some cap of coal down there. He's really very well. Well built. that's why he's in Finding Nemo. <laughs> They're like, We need a fish with a huge penis. <laughs> Now, use his voice. Here, now I'm. You look at you look at sometimes at someone's credits of some stuff they've worked on or things they've done, and you kind of see like the leap. You see like, oh shit! You went from being uh, a guy who was like on a couple shows and you're doing a couple like lot, all all sorts of good projects, but yeah, a little like a, little, a part here, a little part here, and then you do Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, that is that's a fucking enormous leap was that a, did it feel like an enormous leap well, or or is it or am i misjudging this was there something in between that i'm missing the two things that happened at once is i booked pretty face and wolf within the first within two months of each other do you feel like pretty face helped you no no opposite <laughs> opposite. opposite they actually almost wanted to pull me from wolf because the, the, there was one day overlap between productions of the first Whoa. season of pretty face and wolf and they wanted to pull like wolf was like oh he's gonna come do wolf wall street uh, we don't care if it's about a day but they ended up they were like cool as fuck and it ended up being like mm-hmm. great and it worked out fine because scorsese doesn't give a shit and so he was like yeah whatever but he was he was awesome <laughs> also all booked in the room never had a job mm-hmm. easiest job i've ever gotten which is insane because now I've been doing uh, pilots and shit, which is also ludicrous. Where it's like Scorsese literally hired us in the room. Just was like, yeah, we'll hire all of them, which is crazy. Yeah, we Holy just had uh, Paul Servino on the show, and he talked about how Scorsese yeah, Paul was, was on yesterday. He said Scorsese was the yeah. nicest director he's ever worked with, and that he said like he just lets the actors like figure it out. Yep. 
You good mother? Great. He just lets you do the work. That's why he hires you. Mm -hmm. And I kept, you know, well, because during the process, we're all like, I hope we're doing good. And they're like, you'd know if you were doing bad because he'd fire you. I'm like, oh, cool, cool, all right. Um, But uh, yeah, that obviously was the thing. So I worked through that whole time. I worked through 2012, and it was huge. And then, but the problem is that once before Wolf came out, I couldn't get arrested for 2013. I ran out of money. Like I had to go back to almost temping, and which is like I had been working professionally for a little bit, and so it was kind of scary. I thought everything was over, but then when Wolf came out, things changed. Then it was like yeah. a little bit easier to get around. But it's like mm-hmm. it's kind of still the same. You know what I mean? Like it, you just discover there's a working level. You discover I've seen people yeah. blow up. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm watching my buddy Jermaine Fowler just, like, blow mm-hmm. up. Yeah. That fucking guy. I mean, Superior Donuts is fantastic. It's great. He's, he's awesome on it. He knows and he's, he's on doing. And he's on Crashing at the same time. Yeah. He's yeah. doing all the tiny stuff I'm doing, and he's a superstar. He's, like, doing great. Whereas, just, like, Servito, Killer. Matt Servito, Satan from Your Pretty Face, is, like, kind of explained a lot of being like, it's just a long game. You're just going to work, and you're just got to bank when you can and work whenever you can. And then, like, there's going to be major dry spells. He's like, there's the will be. No yeah. matter how good you are, unless you are a superstar, unless you're one of the top 20 movie stars of all time, mm-hmm. every single actor goes through horseshit years. Yeah. You're just not going to book yeah. anything. Dude, Dave Keckner and me just did The Laugh Factory the other night, and he was like, uh, I said, oh, I, I'm really excited because I, I, had, uh, I, I got a call back uh, for, uh, for Transformers, yeah. for one of the Autobots, uh, and I was so excited. And he goes, he goes, buddy, come on, man. You're going to be... We're we're character guys. We're gonna be working for the rest of our fucking lives. No one's gonna know our name. Yep. I love that idea. We'll get recognized for the rest of our fucking life. You just never you just keep fucking working. That's what I, that's the key. You never stop, buddy. You, you just try not to trying. say that's what Servito was saying the same thing with stuff yeah, like you man. just don't you just try not to say no too much. Even if you're doing dumb shit, it's better to be working than not working. Yeah. Like you just 100%. like because you gotta be out there and it's also flexing the muscle. Yeah. It's about get it's doing as much as you can all the time. It's like with Pretty fit. I mean, like with last podcast, it's like yeah. we do our once a week podcast, which is an hour and a half. Then we do a live stream for adultswim.com on Tuesdays nights, which is another just like keeping it running, keep Shit. the mouth fucking blah, 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 blah. And then we do live shows all over the country. And so that's another layer of just like keep the keep the, the butt wet yeah. of your comedy. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's so fucking great. What about um? Uh, do you uh, do you uh, what do you uh, like to eat? What's your favorite <laughs> foods? Me like an Asian. Yeah. Do you like tips of thumbs? Are do, they you like, uh, do you like fucking do you like Genghis Cohen, thumbs? our yeah. favorite Chinese restaurant, which we're recording out of right now? Mm, yum, 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 yum. I like Chinese food. Problem is very heavy. Yeah. So I've been changing a lot yeah. to do a lot of different. I try different Asian styles. I like a sushi if I can get it. A I'm nice a big Mexicanto great. dude. Sure. I like me anything Mexican pretty much. I will. I like I'm one of those. I'm kind of like a little bit of a, the foodie dude where it's I like got nothing going on. Like I'll put together a map of like best breakfast burritos and I'll just hit different breakfast burritos. It's to fill the void. Have sure. you been to Lucky <laughs> Boy yet? <laughs> Is Lucky Boy the one in Pasadena? It is in Pasadena. The one with like t- it's like ten strips of bacon and shit. Yeah, and it's like but a- you want to get the you want to get sausage. I'm gonna say what? And you want to add avocado. I'm Just going like back. Giving you a, a hot tip. If you right. take nothing away from this experience, that's huge for me. Yeah, it's a big deal. Uh, that's good. I I like a good breakfast burrito. Yeah, too. Yeah, I love um, a breakfast burrito. Okay, that's my now, shit. How do you feel about uh, Indian food? Where where do you stand when it comes to Indian food? I like on Indian food again, but the problem is that it's just so heavy. And also, I like nearly shit my pants pretty much every single time I have it. I get sick. I'm not a fan. I, I used to work for a company where all the employees were from India except for me. It was oh, like yeah? 20 people, and I was the only non-Indian employee. It's just so heavy. And like we would go for these company lunches like every Friday, and I was just like, I can't eat this. And then the desserts you can't have plans after. You can't no. have they plans have, they're after. They're all like no. sweet, but they're like yogurty and stuff. And I, they gross I will me. say I like the across the board, like because I, 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 cultures like – that are not in some way kind of Western, their desserts, I just don't care. I, yeah. I feel like, and it's like, the thing is like, that's not why you're going there to begin with. Yeah. They like, don't you're, concentrate you're, on desserts. Yeah. Which, the Italians have it. Yeah, like, the I've been French in, have it. I've yeah. been in China and like, they were like serving dessert after Chinese food. And it's like, it's these weird, you know, lychee cream thing. And I was like, I'll, I'll pass. I don't need that. Yeah. Give me some more deep fried beef. That's what I want. That's good stuff. See, I like this shit. Like, I like all the, like, assholes and organ meat and all of that stuff. I think that stuff's fun. I like when they core out a goat and I'll just eat whatever they core out. Do you ever watch Bizarre Foods? Uh, Yeah, he's okay. I get mad at him, though. 
I get well, mad at a lot of cooking shows. I feel like in the end, I watch a lot of food food based shows. Oh, I, I'm really excited about that. I feel like this is niche, but we could talk about mm-hmm. it. Great yeah, British please. Bake Off. Please. Uh, obsessed. Good Great show. British yeah. Bake Off is the most. It is a sweethearted. It's got a heart to it. Also, it's, it's so nice. genuine, and it's also I love the reason I like it is the Great British Bake Off. They'll like be like, we're gonna bake a classic. Like everyone in England knows about this, and they'll mention a, a food item. Oh, no Cookie Dan, and you're like, yeah. what are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, like, everyone's making our our lemon drizzle poppy loaf, and it's like it's a recipe yeah. that's been passed down for generations you're like no You've one in america and then yeah. one time a lady was making a peanut butter grape jelly flavor thing and the host was like that sounds like a horrible combination and the lady was trying to she was like it's a classic it's, combination and yeah. he was like no it's no, not I and i was like it. but so that show feels genuine show. the food network feels like insane now it's it the just guy feels, fury channel yeah it's just them trying to be They're like all competitions now yeah it's too much competitions it's except I for uh cooks versus cons great show man <laughs> Yeah, chopped. I will talk about Cooks vs. Cons. Because Please. My, chopped is great. Cooks vs. Cons drives me nuts because of the commentators. The commentators are being like, that's a con move. <laughs> that's a chef move. When they keep talking about it, they're being like, just let him fucking cook. <laughs> and I was like, in the end, where it's like, the, they always flip it now because the ones that are most like the chefs are obviously the are cons. Are going to be the it's, cons. That's how they edit it. They're fooling yeah. us. It's on all purpose. They know, No, yeah. it's all. And I, I will say, my uh, 18th birthday party was Iron Chef themed. I had That's all my friends awesome. come over. My parents picked a theme ingredient. It was cheese. We were divided into three teams, and then we had my high school advisor come to my house and judge it. That's incredible. That's awesome. It was a pretty big day. Did because, you win? Uh, no, I did not. We none of us could cook. That was the thing that was hilarious. <laughs> it was just us making our high school advisor eat bad, food. horrible food that was not was cooked like, well. Potential. No, I still like to this day. Lap my one friend. She bought like raw pizza dough. She wrapped cheese in it. Tried to cook it for a little and put like two sad olive eyes and two little <laughs> spinach leaves <laughs> ears and it looked like a little dead bunny. And to this day, I'll, I still picture him looking at it and just being like, "God damn it! Uh, <laughs> like, why did I agree to do?" Well, this? I think about that all all that with those kids cooking competitions. It's like these kids suck for the most part. It's like kids. They shouldn't yeah. be. I don't want to eat the food that a kid. I, their hands are in all types yeah. of places. <laughs> Yeah, it's like Master like, yeah, Chef no. Junior. I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to no. eat that kid's food. That's yeah, because horrible. their lives are just now going to start horrible. Yeah, I was in. Uh, I was on Cupcake Wars. I was uh, a judge. So je- really? I, think I saw you, and I was jealous of you. I was like, how do I get in there? I want to be a judge. Can oh, I? Oh, ha- uh, you want? Yeah, sure. I, uh, Ask I, anything. I my question is like when they're. I can understand judging like real food and be like, this is shitty. This is not like. Even a shitty cupcake from like Vons is still like it's sugary. It has frosting. Like it's fine. Like I can't yeah, imagine when they're layers. like, like this part is bad. I'm like, it's a cupcake. How can you? Can there, you? Well, there's a couple things. So you know, it's judged on uh, taste, right? It's yeah. judged presentation. on presentation and uh, creativity and, and creativity. I believe, right? Okay. <laughs> was this for no, I don't. Third? This was for Big, Big Time, Time Rush. Rush. Also, I wish it was for Storks. I would have had so awesome. much more fun. But uh, yeah, I did enough for Storks. Like I did. Yes, like plenty for stores. You were out I, there. I threw out the first baseball at the Padre game for stores. That's Storks. incredible. Like that, and I have a pigeon. And that Cody, was the uh, first baseball you'd thrown in like twenty years. Yeah, twenty years. <laughs> and he went. Matt went went with me. Did you make it across? I made it across the plate in, into the. In, yeah, I got wow. it. Great pitch. Threw a strike. It. They got it, and I kept from the mound. mound. And I got a. I got a uh, uh, from the mound, and I got the shirt a Padre jersey that says Pigeon Toady on the back yeah. with my birthday. Oh, I was that's like, cute as fuck. That is great. Yeah, it was so rad. That was the best. All right. So when you get the Wars, yeah. Okay, so cupcake Wars. I get to Cupcake Wars, and they say to me, "Is there anything you're allergic to, Mister Glickman? Anything at all?" And I go, "Yeah, I'm uh, I'm kosher, so I just I mean I'm kosherish. I I can't eat uh, milk and meat together, so no meat. And um, I mean that's obvious, but yeah. also no uh, shellfish, and no and I don't eat pork. And yeah. I go, yeah. well, that's fine. Cupcakes. Don't, don't yeah. they're cupcakes. Yep. First cupcake that came came out was a cream cheese bacon cupcake. Unbelievable. Barbecue pork. Barbecue pork. Yeah. Cream cheese cupcake. And I was like, I can't eat this. And I look over at the uh, at the at the producer, and she goes, Just fucking eat it like that. That's what she said (laughs) from the wings. Just fucking eat it. And I was like. Are you kidding me? Like I'm like so I like it's nibbled like a little bit of it. Thousands of years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So yeah, like, in, in like, her head, like, she's like, you're uh, like the guilt. Another, just the guilt. You in Hollywood oh, just causing problems. Bitch. So like I put it down, and then uh, but uh, I mean uh, you know then there was uh, one girl who was making cupcakes that were. These they were awful, and she wouldn't wouldn't add any sugar. Were those the to, sour like, gummy worm? Yeah, they were sour oh, gummy like, worm. Ugh. They were fucking gross. They tasted like shit. And then she didn't know how to decorate, so she covered everything in glitter. And then she took uh, white chocolate 
shoved a big stick of it into one of the cupcakes and then tried to melt the chocolate into it. So it just no. became like, you know, hard as a fucking rock. Uh, right. Well, so, fondant's gross, too. I hate yeah. when they put yeah. fondant uh, all over it. I know. Fondant's bad, too. So anyways, long story short, um, I, 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 a couple, couple days uh, before, two days before the show came out on Cupcake Wars, and I ate something like 15 cupcakes that day. I think awesome. I got diabetes that day. It was yeah. no joke. And I had so many fucking cupcakes. Because you have to eat like half of each one. You so. can't just like take a little baby bite. No, eat. What if it sucks? Are you take, allowed to be like, I don't like it? You have to take at least like a nice size bite of each cupcake. Or to get all the elements. To be able to get, to get, all get it all in there. Yeah. And they fill it with stuff too. Do you get a palate cleanser you provided with like? Wa- I think they have water and crackers or something. How but does Padma Lakshmi look the way she does after that one in that one? Woman is a living gorgeous. goddess. Yes, yeah. she is yeah. gorgeous. How yeah. does she stay so tight? And Flo- Floria, Flo- uh, mm-hmm. Floria, is that his name? The, yeah, the, chef, the French guy. Him and I are still, we still talk. That's awesome. Yeah, like, like, we just texted each other like yesterday. So or, tell me, do yeah. you want to maybe Where, go by my show? Ooh, can, can you actually ask him yes. if he was going to pick a place where the cupcakes are actually worth it. Where yeah. would he say? Yeah, give us that. Because we'll I would like to know. We'll, I'll, I'll send it to him Inside before we go. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, how long are you sitting there judging? Well, I'm th- we were there for uh, six hours. Six it was hours. A long time. Yeah, it was a long time. But here's the uh, so here's the the big uh, the big uh, reveal is uh, is a uh, co- co- couple days before the episode came out. I'm over at uh, Katsuya. I'm drunk. Yep. Okay. Walking out of the place. TMZ comes right up to me and they go, hey, Steven, we hear you're going to be on Cupcake Wars. How was it? And I go, well, it was fucking gross. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, excuse me? And I go, I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys what happened. I said, I not eat milk yeah. at me. I do not eat this. I don't eat that. And they fucking made me eat a barbecue pork cupcake. I was like, what the fuck kind of fucking bullshit is this like a oh, whole Jewish families they're all mad at me now and you know and they wouldn't they wouldn't even you know, apologize and uh, they they put it up on on TV and they put it up online and the article said uh, big time rush star gets screwed by cupcake wars oh my mm-hmm. god yeah so I get a phone call from Nickelodeon and they're like what you do yeah you're not uh, cupcake wars just called us. And they said Food Network will never work with Nickelodeon ever again because of this. Oh, my God. Like, you owe them (laughs) such an enormous apology. Like, you have to go on TV and apologize or something. And I was like... I was like, "What the fuck?" I was like, "I was, it was, I was just drunk, and I, uh, you know, and they're a bunch of assholes, and you know, they shouldn't." And they were like, "Also, they're not going to pay you now because you didn't, because you revealed uh, a secret secrets like- about the show. Like you revealed uh, items that were in the cupcakes. You've ruined the episode for people." Oh so, my god! And I was like, "This is fucking crazy, right?" Mm-hmm. So then my manager calls me. He's like, "Steven, like." People are upset at Viacom. Like you've made like a lot of enemies to, and everyone's fucking mad at me. And I'm like trying to write letters to apologize. As I'm doing all of this, one of the kids, one of these fucking 2.5 million Twitter follower kids on Nickelodeon, gets off an airplane at LAX. They fucking run up to him. TMZ. They're like, "Hey, did you hear about this whole thing going on with Stephen Glickman?" He's like, "What happened to my buddy Stephen Glickman?" They're like, "Well, I mean, he had this kosher thing with you know cupcake boards. I mean, is that even real? Is he even like really Jewish?" Mm-hmm. And and this kid goes, "Stephen Kramer Glickman is the most Jewish guy I know. <laughs> he follows all the kosher laws, and if and if the Food Network." Like uh, doesn't apologize for for being uh, so insensitive in, insensitive to his yeah. culture and to his religion. I feel like that's a like a huge you know screw up on their part. Anti semites. Yeah. 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 Oh, it was wow. this close oh, to Nazis to them calling the him anti semitism. <laughs> And fucking uh, Food Network sent over a basket of cupcakes as an apology to me, nice. and then wrote back to to Viacom and said, "Hope we, we we can restore our relationship with you guys. Sorry, it was, it was some sort of miscommunication." Mm-hmm. But that article from TMZ is still on the internet. Which you don't yelling. know, though, Stephen. The cupcakes sent over made with bacon grease. Wow! <laughs> oh yeah, they were but delicious. Though I, I do love delicious. the idea of you sitting with like seasoned war vets and them being like, "My time in the war," and you're like, "My <laughs> war is hell," and I'll tell yeah. you why. I'll tell you yeah. what I've seen. <laughs> I've eaten some cupcakes. Um, well, we uh, we got to wrap this uh, uh, up, sugar pie. But uh, b- but Oops. before we do, before we wrap it up, yeah, coming yeah. up coming up next for you. 
Yeah. Uh, Henry, what's uh, what's coming up next? Trauma Fist? Is this, is this? Trauma Fist is not really a thing. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. I wasn't sure. <laughs> it's in your it's in your things. It's in why. there. Trauma um, was very they're very into it. I've been working with Trauma and I know Lloyd and working with them. They're just they're a fun ass bunch. I did Return to Nukem High yeah. Two. Great yeah. company that did uh, Surf Nazis Must Die. They're Toxic nuts. Avenger. Return to Return to Nukem High, yeah. aka Volume Two. You yes. were in that one as well. Yeah. Uh, when is uh, your pretty face going to hell uh, season? Three point five. Three point five. When does it's that come a, out? Uh, actually, came out last Sunday. Started uh, April second, and we're going every Sunday at eleven thirty p.m. on Adult Swim. Oh Sunday. my god, that's Sunday. amazing! Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, dude, it's such a fucking great show. Our if new you, shit's better too. Oh, I can't, I can't thank you enough, man. All Coming the, in and chatting. This with is us the about best. This. Thank you guys so, so much for having me. I love no, it. I'll you're talk so Food awesome. Network all the time. Uh, I mm-hmm. and I never have people to talk about it with. Like enough work. I am. I have a deep working <laughs> knowledge. I, I've been with Food Network since, I want to say, day one. High and, school. And I was watching it when... It, I feel like you should turn this off now because this is going to go for yeah. like six hours. <laughs> Iron Chef, though, I'm still mad about Iron Chef. They're trying to bring it back, and I'm yeah. really fucking... Uh, I back, was yeah. in it for OG Iron Chef, yeah. where they I were like serving the octopus that was still moving. Chili. Oh, yeah. Japanese, Japanese Iron Chef. Was, Japanese Iron Chef. It was a real Iron competition. Chef. They took it really seriously. Yes. And now yeah. these fucking guys Chef are like, like Yuki Sakai. He was great. He was great. I love Chairman Kaga. Chairman Kaga. Biting into that pepper. Mm-hmm. Like an apple. What a psycho. Love I like him. a zine. I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, yeah. check out uh, Last Podcast on the Left on uh, Cave Comedy Radio, iTunes. We normally drop every Thursday. Awesome. So fucking cool. You're thank the best. You. Dude, thank you for coming and hanging out. Thank you. And uh, audience, if you haven't seen Crashing, it's literally worth getting HBO just to watch this show. It really, really shows you what it feels like to be a stand-up comedian. It's and, miserable. And, and, yeah, it's miserable. It's <laughs> That's fucking it. Pretty rough. Accurate. Yeah. Uh, but Henry, you're the fucking coolest. Thanks for, for uh, coming to do this, man. Thank you for best. having me. All right, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, at Henry. Henry loves you on Twitter and at Dr. Fantasty on Instagram. Yeah. What about you, uh, Logan? Where can people find you? Uh, on Twitter, I'm at a uh, Dirty Guns, G U N T Z, and on Instagram, I'm at Places I Took a Shit This Year. So, <laughs> so fucking great. Good one. I this is it. a good standard, strong novelty one. So my Dr. Fantasy ones comes from my Halo, Halo gamer tag from college. Ooh. Oh, I like that. That's good. Yeah. I liked uh, driving that ghost in, ha- in Halo. Love yeah. that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was a hammer guy. I like that. that the best. Oh, mm. shit. What about you, Matt? Where can people find you? Uh, you can find links to everything at funnymatt.com, or if you do not like my work on this show, let me know at mattwalkersucks.com. <laughs> It's a real, real website where yeah. people do uh, let you know. I put all my hate mail on there. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it's terrific. Collect it and use it. Flip the energy. Yeah. That's yeah. chaos magic. <laughs> you bet. You can always get me at Stephen Glickman on YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to the Nighttime Show podcast. Leave comments and also share. Guys, this has been amazing. Henry Zabrowski, we love you. Thank you. Hail Satan. Thank you for having me. Death is